Hey, how y'all doing out there? I'm back again with another video. Today I want to do a quick comparison between the LG Wing and the LG V60. Now, both of these devices came out in 2020 of last year. Both are flagship devices. And both are unlocked for all carriers. Now, when it comes to design, both of these phones are designed a little different. As you can see, you got the cameras on the LG Wing that's over to the left side that are going down and then you have the ones to the LG V60 that goes across now when it comes to design which design do I like best I'd have to go with the LG wing it just looks better to me now also let me take off this case so you can see why I like the design better see this phone just looks so sleek and just like it has that elegant business-like type look to it I mean it just looks beautiful so I love the design of this device I really do I like it a lot all right next let's talk about build quality and durability now when it comes to the LG wing you're getting Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back and with the LG V60, you're getting Gorilla Glass on the front and Gorilla Glass 6 on the rear. And both are military grade drop protection um, protected. So you're going to get, you're getting great build quality on both. You're getting adequate build quality. So both have the military drop protection on them. And both of them got Gorilla Glass. This just has Gorilla Glass 5 on the front. In the back, this has 5 and 6 on the rear. Now, when it comes to build quality, it's not just about what device has what Gorilla Glass on it. It also comes down to how the phone feels in your hand. Okay, now, most people use cases, but there are some people that don't like cases on their phone because it makes them feel a little bulkier, a little thicker, a little heavier. And they don't want a case on their phone. They want to rock it, you know, with no case. Now, when it comes to overall build quality, even though this one has a little bit better as far as Gorilla Glass, because it has Gorilla Glass 6 on the back, but when it comes to how the phone feels in my hand, I got to go with the LG Wing because it feels so premium, so comfortable. I mean, it, I, I can't, it's hard to explain, but it just feels so slick and smooth. I mean, it just has a business type feel to it, so... When it comes to overall build quality and how the phone feels, I gotta go with the LG Wing. But don't get don't get it twisted. The LG V60 don't feel bad in the hand, but this just feels just has more of a elegant type feel to it. It just feels more comfortable when I'm holding it in the hand without a case. Now it can be a little slippery. That's why I prefer to use this case, and then it has a kickstand too because you know I watch a lot of movies on my device. But I love the way this feels in my hand without a case. And both have an aluminum frame, and I forgot to mention that. All right, next thing, let's talk about always-on display. Of course, they both have the same always-on display, and that's something that is a must for me on a phone. I just have to have an always-on display. So both of these have always-on display. Now, the only thing that I don't like about either one of these devices is that neither one of these devices have face unlock. You got the LG Wing with a pop-up selfie, no face unlock. You got the LG V60 premium flagship device, no face unlock. I don't understand why LG made that decision not to put face unlock on these devices, but it's not on either device. So keep that in mind. Both also have an optical um, in display fingerprint sensor of course you got you can just press down in the area you know if you hit it if you know where it's at because it doesn't stay lit see that one just lit up or you could double tap to see it but both of them have the same fingerprint sensor and when it comes down to performance with both of them they're pretty much the same I can't really say one's better than the other they're pretty much the same also let's talk about button placement so, with the button placement on the LG Wing, you got your all your buttons on one side, your volume buttons, and your power button all on one side. Very 
uh, reachable with the power button. Nothing on the left side. So I love the button placement on the LG Wing. When it comes to the LG V60, you got your volume rockers on the left and a dedicated Google button. And you got the power button on the right. And the only thing that's bad about the button placement on the LG V60 is that the power button is a little too high. You see where I got literally got to stretch my finger, my thumb just to reach that. It should be right here. See the way I'm holding the phone right here? That button should be right here where my thumb is. It's just a little too high. So I prefer the button placement on the LG V, I mean, on the LG Wing better than the LG V60. And also keep in mind for me, I'm a right-handed person, so I prefer all my buttons on one side. You're going to get that with the wing. You're not going to get that with the V60. Now, I know there's some people that prefer the volume buttons on the left, but I prefer everything being on the right. So that's just me. All right, let's take a look at the displays. Turn both on. <clears throat> All right. Now, when it comes to display, they both are using a 1080p POLED Full HD Plus display. Neither one of these phones have a high refresh rate. So you just stuck with 60, which for most people, you'll be fine with that. A lot, you know, there are some people out there that, that feel as though 120 hertz refresh rate kills the battery. And it just depends on the phone and the manufacturer. Like with the OnePlus 8 Pro, it's 120 hertz at Quad HD Plus resolution, but I'm still getting great battery life. I can still get a day and a half with that phone. So it's not always like it's going to kill your battery to the point where you can't make it through a day. Now, if these phones had that, maybe they wouldn't be able to make it through a full day. I don't know. You know, they didn't put a high refresh rate on these devices, so we'll never know. Now, what makes a little bit of difference you got that 1080p Full HD Plus POLED display on the LG Wing on the main display. But when you flip the phone up, you got another display right down here, as you can see. And this has a 1080p GeoLED display. So you got 1080p up here, POLED, and a 1080p GeoLED. Both are great. Both look outstanding. So you have the combination of two displays. This is a rotating display. And of course, with the LG V60, you just got this main display. Now, keep in mind, you can buy a dual screen case that will accompany this phone and you'll get two displays, two full displays. But I didn't, I wasn't interested in the dual uh, case, but I just want to let my viewers know that you can buy the dual case and then I think it'll run you around a hundred bucks. It may be a little cheaper now since the phone's been out for a while. But I know the last time I checked, it was about $100 for that case. And I checked on uh, eBay. All right, so you can get dual screen. The dual screen is built into this one. This one, you have to purchase it. Now, also a difference with these displays. Now, with the LG Wing, you have a thin bezel at the top and a very thin bezel at the bottom and no side bezels whatsoever. So when it comes to just how the display looks overall, I like this display better. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because with the LG V60, you got these thick bezels around the sides and thicker bezels at the bottom and the top, plus you gotta deal with a notch. Let me show you. See that notch? I hate that. I really hate that. You're not getting that on the LG Wing. You're just getting all display. So I don't like that. Now you can get rid of it on the home screen, but that's the only place you can get rid of it. Everywhere else is gonna show up. So I don't like the implementation of this display with the LG V60, I don't, not at all. Also keep in mind with both these displays, they're the same as far as resolution, but this the LG Wing is a little narrower and the LG V60 is a wider device. So. It's going to come down to personal preference, whether you want a, phone, a wider display or a little more narrow display. It's probably going to be a little more manageable with the LG V60 with your hands than that of the LG V60, unless you have 
big hands or you don't have to have big hands it might just not matter you just might like bigger and wider phones now i'll be honest i prefer the size of this phone over that of the lg wing but i could do i could deal with either because both of them are 6.8 inches so they're the but they're, they're they're you know the same height but they're just different in dimension as far as width is concerned all right and also, unfortunately, no Quad HD on either device. Now, when it comes to water resistance, the LG Wing has an IP54 splash proof protection, and the LG V60 has IP68 water and dust resistance. So you're gonna get the better water resistance on the LG V60. You can submerge this five feet of water for 30 minutes, you'll be fine. This one's only good, the LG Wing's good for splashes, that's it. Next, let's talk about 5G compatibility. Both are 5G compatible. So if you're the type of person that you need 5G phones, both of these phones are 5G compatible. All right, let's talk about storage capacity. The LG Wing comes with 256 gigs of internal storage. The LG V60 comes with 128 gigs of internal storage. Now keep in mind, there is 120 8 gig variant of the LG Wing and there's also a, a 256 gig variant of the LG V60 so you don't have to settle for 128 and you don't have to do 256 if you just want 128 but both of them have the same storage capacity depending on what variant you get also both of these phones have expandable mem expandable storage up to 2 terabytes so you can't you're not going to have a problem with expandable storage because you get it on both of these and they're the same next let's talk about ram management both phones come with eight gigs of ram and ram management on both of these is very very good no problems with that next let's talk about the chipset and performance you have the snapdragon 765g with the lg wing and with the lg v60 you got the snapdragon 865 this has the better processor because it has a flagship processor that of from last year. And with the LG Wing, you got the 765G, so you got a mid-range processor. But I'll tell you, it does perform very, very well. But when it comes to the, the, the phone that performs the best between the two, it's going to be the LG V60 because this phone is super fast. It's super fast and smooth. It definitely outperforms the LG Wing. But I will say with the LG Wing, you're still going to get an adequately fast and extremely buttery smooth experience on this phone as well. So when it comes to performance, both are great, but the LG V60 is clearly better because of the flagship processor that's inside of it. Next, let's talk about future software updates. Now, both of these phones are scheduled to get upgradable up to Android 13. This is what LG said before they exited the smartphone market. Currently, the LG Wing that I have here still is on Android 10, but the LG V60 has already been upgraded to Android 11. Now, LG has never been very timely and good when it comes to software updates. They always lag around and drag around and, and slow, so that was always their reputation. So. Just look at it this way. The longer they take to upgrade it, the longer your phone will last. Because as soon as you get it, it will last a little longer. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, it's probably not the biggest deal. As long as you're not having any performance issues, you should be fine. Let's talk about battery life. Now, the LG Wing has a 4,000 milliamp battery, and the V60 has a 5,000 milliamp battery. Both have excellent standby time, and both have great battery life. Now, I've gotten a day and a half out of the wing, but I get two days out of the LG V60 easily. Sometimes I can get three days if I use it light. So you're going to get better battery life with that of the LG V60 because it's a thousand milliamps larger than that of the 4,000 milliamp battery in the LG wing. But both are very good on battery life. You're going to get through a full day with both easily, but I can get two days with heavy usage on the LG V60 and I can get a day to a day and a half on the LG wing now keep in mind if you're the type of person that you like to shoot a lot of video you're gonna run through both of these phones extremely fast when it comes to battery life 
especially if you're shooting in 10, 1080p at 60 or 4K at 60. You're going to run through the battery very quick and you're going to need your charger with you. So if you plan on shooting a lot of video, make sure you keep a charger close by because when these phones shoot at a high frame rate, you're going to go through the battery quickly because the phone is going to heat up a little bit. All right, so keep that in mind. Both have wireless charging. Wireless charging is slow on both. It takes forever to charge these phones um, with wireless charging. Some cases over three hours, it's just slow. So the technology is slow when it comes to wireless charging. But they do have wireless charging, which is something that I prefer because I have wireless charging stands all over the place. So it's not a, this is not a must feature for a lot of people, but I know for me, I want wireless charging. Next, both have quick charge 4.0 fast wired charging, which is also slow, but you'll be able to charge both from zero to 100% in about an hour and 42 minutes. So it's fast charging, but it's slow compared to today's standards when you got uh, 30 watts, 33 watt fast charging, 25 watt, 45 watt, 50 watt, 67 watt, 65 watt, 120 watt charging. So wireless um, wired charging has come a long way in with you know when it comes to technology and how fast you can you know um, charge a device. So these are way behind the times when it comes to that. But if you're just going to charge it overnight, you're not going to have a problem. It's not the kind of phone that you can top off quickly because. You know the, the the charging technology is just old next now let's talk about speakers and audio quality now with the lg wing you got the one down firing speaker and with the lg v60 you got dual stereo speakers speaker in the bottom speaker come through the earpiece and it's no contest when it comes to the speaker quality the lg v60 is destroying the lg wing because these dual stereo speakers on this device are absolutely amazing and super loud and really nice stereo sound with this one it does have a loud stereo um, down fine speaker it's not a mono speaker it does sound decent and it gets relatively loud but it's just one speaker so when you want if you want to have that immersive type of experience with your media you're not going to get that with the LG Wing. you're just not you're going to get that with the LG V60 and it's a shame because especially when you go to flip the phone like this and you want to watch a movie and you're holding the phone like this, it'd be nice if you had sound coming through the earpiece up there and you had this speaker uh, going at the same time. It would just it would just make for a much more immersive experience. So it's just unfortunate. LG really dropped the ball on that one when it comes to uh, the speakers. Next, you got the LG V60 has a headphone jack. And the LG Wing does not have a headphone jack. And also, what affects this phone when it comes to audio, there's no 32-bit Hi-Fi Quad DAC. You're going to get that 32-bit Hi-Fi Quad DAC in the LG V60. So when it comes to overall audio, the LG V60 is vastly superior to the LG Wing. Next, both devices have Bluetooth 5.1, NFC, and in um fm radio next also both devices have pin support so you can use a pin on either device now let's talk about the cameras now there are some differences with both cameras i know you may think there is there isn't because they're both made by lg they're both flagship and they pretty much do the same boat but there are some there's some subtle differences when it comes to the camera now with the lg wing you're getting a 64 megapixel wide with optical image stabilization, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. You're getting steady recording, and the rear cameras shoot at 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second, at, and 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second. And also, you can shoot at 8K at 24 frames per second. The one thing that also L the LG Wing has that's up its sleeve that's pretty cool, it has a gimbal mode, and it offers dual recording and I'll show you where you can find that so when you flip this up into the secondary display you hit the camera automatically takes you to gimbal mode and that's really cool see that right there so you could take that and it, it'll move the camera for you side to side up 
and down so that's really cool i love that and see down here it says gimbal mode and then you got dual recording so if you want to you could basically with dual recording you could record yourself and record whatever you're doing out there pop-up selfies right here so that's cool i like that so that's a big that's an advantage of the lg wing the l the v60 don't have that capability it does not have gimbal mode and it does not have dual recording now let's talk about the selfie camera on the lg wing now that shoot is a 32 megapixel pop-up uh, selfie camera and it shoots at 1080p at 30 frames per second it has no 1080p at 60 frames per second and it has no 4k recording at all I don't know why LG did that. I don't know why they wouldn't add 4K at least at 30 frames and 1080p at 60 frames. They 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 really cheated this phone with some features, honestly. And it, and this is a great device. I really love this device, but they really cheated it with some you know normal features that should that should have came with it, especially with it being a thousand dollars when it was released. Now, when it comes to the LG V60, you're getting a 64 megapixel standard lens with optical image stabilization, 13 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 3 megapixel time of flight sensor. You're also getting steady recording. Now, when it comes to the rear cameras, they shoot at 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second, and at 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second, and 8K at 30 frames per second. So you have here with the wing. 8k at 24 frames per second but with the lg v60 you're getting 8k at 30 frames per second so this one is going to be a little more steadier you know when you're shooting at 8k you don't want to shoot at 8k much because it's a large file and it's going to take up a lot of storage on your device especially if you have the 128 gig variant so you really don't it really is not necessary to shoot at 8k because you're not going to be able to play it back on an 8k a TV unless you have an 8k TV so I just think it's overkill 4k at 60 is good enough even 1080p at 60 is more than enough honestly all right now when it comes to the selfie on the LG V60 you're getting a 10 megapixel so they put a 32 megapixel in the LG wing and only a 10 megapixel in the LG V60 don't know why but that's what they did standard lens that shoots at 4k now you're getting 4k at 30 and 60 frames on the v60 and you can shoot at 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second same thing this should, this one should have been able to do same thing but this one is that is superior when it comes to 4k at 60 on the front and the back and 1080p at 60 on the front and the back so advantage the v60 now when it comes to both of these devices, which is a big disappointment as well, neither one of these uh, selfie cameras has a wide lens. I don't know why LG did that. They used to have wide angle on their front, their selfie cameras, but for some reason with these last three or four uh, devices, they, they just took the wide angle off. And that's unfortunate, especially if you want to take selfies with somebody and you need, you know, you're trying to get more people in the picture. You're not going to be able to do that unless you walking around with some kind of um i forgot what they call them selfie stick and you you know you got somebody with long arms maybe but other than that you get no wide angle on the selfie camera on either one of these devices now when it comes down to it which one do i think you should pick up now i can't really answer that for you it's very subjective and it's going to depend on you if you want innovation I would say go with the wing because there is nothing out there like this. <laughs> I'm telling you, this you're not going to see many people walk around with this device. You're just not. But I'm telling you, this is very innovative. I love this. The build quality is great. The uh, video, the photos, great. Battery life is very good. The display is great. I wish it had dual stereo speakers, but it doesn't. And you're not going to get any 4K at uh, 30 or 60 on the selfie camera. No 1080p at 60 on the front camera. But other than that, you got the gimbal mode, dual recording, and just this unique, unique style. I mean, I just, this is just really cool. I mean, 
you <laughs> you around somebody and you do this in front of them, they're gonna be like, man, what kind of phone is that? You're gonna this is gonna this is the eye catcher right here. So if you about somebody, you know, catching somebody's eye and you like innovation, I would go with this one. Can't go wrong. Great. Now, when it comes to the V60, of course you're just getting your standard phone with, you know, a big display. You know, you're getting nice build quality. You're getting great battery life. Now, you can't go wrong with this either because everything on here is great, honestly. I wish you had a quad HD display and a high refresh rate, but that's that's just me. That's personal preference. But when it comes down to both, you can't go wrong with both. But if I had to choose between the two, I have to go with the V60. Let me tell you, it's only for a few reasons. The dual stereo speakers, when I'm watching movies and video content, I need them dual stereo speakers. These are absolutely awesome. And I, I just, I need that. That's what kills it for me with the LG Wing. Need them dual stereo speakers. Next thing I need, I need that headphone jack. Because you're going to get better overall quality of sound through a wire connection. Next, I need that 32-bit hi-fi quad deck. That's built in to that headphone jack. I need that. You're not going to get that with the LG Wing. And the last thing, you're going to get better battery life because you're getting a 5,000 milliamp battery compared to the 4,000 milliamp battery in the LG Wing. So those are the things for me. Battery life, 32-bit hi-fi quad deck, dual stereo speakers, headphone jack. If you're the kind of person you need those, then you want the V60. But like I said, if you want innovation, you want to have a device that nobody else is going to be walking around with, that takes great videos, photos, good battery life, decent speaker, great display, great build quality, always on display. You're getting a little bit of water protection, but you're going to get a very innovative device. I would go with the LG Way. But for me, I got to go with the LG V60. But as you can see, I don't have to go with one over the other because I got both. <laughs> and I love them both. And they give me a different experience with both. So I'm grateful that I got both. So that was my quick comparison of the LG Wing and the LG V60. Can't go wrong with both. Both are great devices. Depending on what kind of person you are and what you're looking for in a device, both are great. Can't go wrong. So thank you very much for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. I hope everybody's staying safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.